Good morning, Professor Jean Lave. Uh, you are a celebrated anthropologist and educational scholar, and you may not know this, but your concept of communities of practice is on everybody's lips whenever we talk about um, anything related to health professions education. It is such an honor to meet you. Unfortunately, on Zoom and hopefully live someday. And uh, as an organization, we want to celebrate your contributions to education. And uh, as I had uh, told you before, well, Amy started in Europe uh, as an association for medical educators. It is now a truly global organization for health professions, education, and educators. So our mission is to nurture aspiring and established educators and promote collaboration across diverse, inclusive, global community of health professionals. There it comes again. And uh, want uh, it to foster scholarship, leadership, and best educational practices. In this recording, um, you are the recipient of the Amy Honorary Fellowship this year. It's a fellowship that recognizes educational scholars and leaders whose work has had a really wide-reaching positive impact on ed health professions education. So, and you are the architect of situated learning in communities of practice. And I wish to emphasize how your theories have impacted all of us in our daily educational practice. So for the Amy participants who will be watching this video, we really want them to be inspired by, you are a legend and we don't know you, it, like we hold you on a pedestal when we talk about um, all your theories and concepts. So in order for us to learn about you, could we start briefly with your background, your academic journey, and leadership roles all along the way. And I will let you go. Oh dear. First of all, I want to thank you and everyone who must be putting a lot of work into making the conference and making that the fellowship a possibility. I'm I feel so honored and and delighted to have this opportunity to receive the fellowship, but more to find out more about all of you and what the Amy is doing, which I think is quite remarkable. And it doesn't surprise me that uh, it's around notions of communities of practice that you find what I've been doing interesting, but that's also why I find what you are doing interesting as well and and exciting. Um, I grew up in uh, Urbana, Illinois, in the Middle West, in the US, and uh, went to college at Stanford University, and then um, uh, uh, went to the uh, uh, social relations in at Harvard University for my graduate work in social anthropology. Uh, and from there to the University of California, Irvine, which was one of the new campuses of the University of California in the mid-1960s. I started teaching in 1966. And, um, you know, it's it's a lot of years since then. But what that what social relations was, what the uh, School of Social Sciences at Irving, Irvine was, and basically every place I have uh, taught and worked with colleagues since then has been an interdisciplinary setting in which um uh, as an anthropologist, uh, uh, I, 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 I've always, of course, worked with other anthropologists, but always with people from other disciplines. And uh, uh, it's the heterogeneity of that ins inspiration to think differently about things, 
which I think is very important to what's happened in my life. But also, uh, I'm very struck by the dimensions of diversity in Amy, the multiple uh, multiple disciplines, the worldwide uh, scope of of your uh, the the organization, but of the and the many different medical kinds of medical practice that are involved, uh, which have to uh, have posed for everybody the question of what constant why how are we going to understand uh learning and change uh uh be, in circumstances that do not conform to uh kind of the kind of fallback go to notions of schooling or education in the most conventional senses um uh, so that's what I think inspires and is inspiring about your organization. Um, what else have I done? So let's see. I taught at Irvine for 20 years. Then I spent a year at uh, a, a new think, small think tank, or it was an offshoot of the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center. Uh, I spent a year at the Institute for Research on Learning. And it was there in working with a group of people for a year, including uh, Etienne Wenger, who was my student. He came to spend the year at the Institute as well. And we decided we would write this little essay to try and uh, sum up what um, we had been all discussing over the course of the year. So in a very short period of time, much less time and much less anxiety uh, than any other project I've ever been involved in. We sort of tossed off the situated learning book. Um, uh, and, and, and I guess, thank goodness that that kind of happened. Um, uh, and where that, let's see, perhaps I should say two things. I went on to UC Berkeley, where I taught for another 20 years. And I am now retired. Actually, I've been retired for some years. I, I'm, I'm, uh, um, you know, I'm really old, and I've been at it for a very long time. Um, uh, but the other thing I wanted to say, kind of going in the opposite direction, is that where did these ideas come from? For me, and for them through the inspiring work of lots of colleagues along the way. Um, I, because of my association with cultural psychologists and others at the University of California at Irvine, um, I went off to Liberia in the 1970s to do uh, uh, research um, uh, aimed at asking the questions question, how do people learn if they are not in schools? And discovered that uh, I, I was, uh, uh, I didn't have a good uh, language, good ways of thinking about, I didn't know the answer to that question. How do people engage in learning? when they aren't doing so in schoolish ways. And that question has kind of been um, at the root of my work ever since the 1970s. But the notions of uh, 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 situate, the situated character of learning, which I think is true of all learning, I do not think there are any exceptions, um, uh, uh, the notions of communities of practice, uh, uh, which really is a, uh, the same question. How do people involved in doing things together in rich and complicated ways, had heterogeneous ways of participating, changing over time? How do people learn to engage in doing that and develop and and move it across generations of learners 
And that seems to me to be uh, the deep question that your organization is involved in. And what makes me really uh, uh, as so grateful to be part of, of what you guys are involved in doing. Thank you. Uh, uh, that, that is very inspirational. Believe it or not, I have, uh, well, I didn't say, but I forgot to tell you that uh, from a, a big city in India, I through the US, and now I have the honor of being chosen to lead Amy for last since last year for a couple of years. And it's been an exceedingly humbling experience However, when I started my journey into education from just being a doctor, well, being a doctor is good enough, but, um, but added the dimension of being an educator, an educational scientist, I have a, a concentric circle model, which I use all the time in my presentations and my publications, which exactly is the communities of practice and how one can journey through it from the periphery to the center. So I will say you've inspired me and legions of health professions educators. But um, but uh, if, if you don't mind, I just wanted to ask you two questions, actually a two-part question. One, what was your reaction when Ava reached out to you and said you are the recipient of the Amy Honorary Fellowship and the second is, can you give us one message for health professions educators at all levels around the world? Oh, my goodness. First of all, it, it should be obvious, I hope, that I was both incredibly surprised and so pleased. What a wonderful and kind thing to do. And um, and. Uh, I, 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 it, it was a complete surprise. I, I had no idea. And when things, things like that don't happen in one's life very often, and it's a very special feeling and a very special moment. And I'm deeply grateful, um, and 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 astonished. <laughs> um, I think. Uh, I kind of I, I tried to think what could I say that might be a, a, a recognition back of what I, I see that you uh, are doing that seems really of 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 special potential uh, as I mean going on now but potential for change. In uh, health, in education in general, coming from the experience of health education. I think health education is a, a better place to start into thinking about the complex issues that all education faces, but doesn't often doesn't always see. And and I, I was thinking about the ways how uh, uh, you the practices that health professionals are engaged in are complex and in many ways non-negotiable uh, 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 com complex relations that you as educators uh, uh, are are trying to understand and support. And they're very complex, and they are deeply pressing for changes. And surely that's the best possible basis for uh, thinking about, uh, for, for being faced in your work as educators with, first of all, um, patients and students, the people who are are the learners kind of at the the core uh, uh, of of the concern of health professions, 
But then at the you as educators uh, at many different levels, working with each other and working in these hybrid ways as clinicians and educators means that you're always learners. And you're learn and and surely the most important uh, thing that gets left out of discussions of education is learners learning. Um, and to me, it's the the progressive issues. I think about the themes of this conference, which I took to be, um, I wrote them down. I thought it was really interesting. The notion of, of diversity and change and change for the future. I think that's what learning is about. And as in the circumstances you find yourselves in as health education professionals, uh, those are, are never sort of isolated, uh, will make lessons, will teach classes, whatever. They are always complex communities of practice that you you are part of and that you face. And I think that makes uh, uh, the practice of education uh, uh, have real possibilities for addressing change for the future. Um, so I look forward to seeing more of it in future years. Thank you very much, Professor Lev. Uh, thank you for inspiring me and a lot of people like me in health professions education. And the honor is well-deserved. And I'm so glad Ava Piorola and the nominations committee uh, chose you because I think it took about two seconds for people to say yes, I will say that. <laughs> so thank you very much. And I do hope to meet you in person someday since we don't live that far away, I think. Thank you so much. Thank you.